We're under a grave threat in this country. We're probably under the greatest threat we've been under as a nation. See, the threat of the Second World War was from a foreign enemy. The threat from the First World War was from a foreign enemy, and likewise Vietnam and Korea. The war we're in now is much more dangerous than those wars because we're warring among ourselves. And we're a deeply divided country. It has never been harder to be a pastor than right now, never. Pastoring is now a job that requires a depth of commitment that is unlike any other time in American history. That's why we need to pray for our pastors. Clap real loud. We need to pray for our pastor. You got to. Yep. After the man at the gate beautiful got up and walked, they were arrested. They were told not to preach the gospel anymore. And when they were told not to preach the gospel anymore, Peter told them, <clears throat> he said, uh, you decide whether we should obey God or man, but we cannot help but speak of those things which we've both seen and heard. There was a day in the church in California where people were getting saved in record numbers. And one of the reasons for it was that people did not know how to witness. They say, well, Mara, don't you need to know how to witness in order to convert someone? That's the problem. We turned what was a spontaneous overflow of excitement into a programmed presentation. In the Jesus movement, people who didn't know how to put into words what was happening to them were more contagious because their excitement arrived before their words. They gave off a, a word that we used to use back in the day, a vibration. Well, it was more of a shock wave. Now we're living in a moment where everything is being shaken. That means that Jerry Lee Lewis was a true prophet because he said there's a whole lot of shaking going on. That was terrible, don't laugh at that. But am I right? Are we going through a shaking as a nation right now? So we've got to do this. Peter decided, no, we're not gonna stop. But his thought was, what does the church do? I don't know of a worse time than right now for false prophecy, false sermons, false advice, and people getting up and just saying whatever they think is from God. And I don't believe it's God. I don't believe half of it is God. I don't believe that God overnight because of Facebook turned into a gigantic blabbermouth. How many of you believe the Bible is what we ought to trust more than anything else? How many of you believe everything we do has got to be rooted in the Word of God? So after they were threatened, they let them go and Peter had to make a decision. And here's what Peter said. In verse 23 of Acts chapter four, he got the people together and told them everything that the politicians had said. This is the threat. Now that's love, look at me, look at verse 23. He told them all that the magistrates and the leaders had said. Look me in the eye. A pastor ought to preach against abortion. You ought to. I heard a pastor say, we should not have celebrated the overturning of Roe v. Wade. I said, you're so open-minded, your brains have fallen out. That was a day of victory. That was a day of celebration. That was a day when a savage,
curse was lifted from our legal system. He told him everything. The threat in our educational system ought to be declared from the pulpit. Your people are going through something. That single mom who's fighting the school board looks around and says, where's my pastor? It ought not to be. But what is the answer, Mari? Is the answer for pastors to get in the pulpit and talk all about woke and critical race theory and abortion and that's it? No, that is just the very tip of the iceberg because it isn't the left, it isn't race, it's the devil that we need to defeat in Jesus' name. No, I gotta say it again. It is Satan that we got to defeat. You know what I'm doing up here? I'm declaring war on the devil and I'm telling the devil, you cannot have California. California is destined to be used of God and we, I rebuke you, Satan. Come on, help me now. I rebuke you, Satan. Glory to God. So here's how defiant Peter was. He said, you told me I can't preach in the name of Jesus. Is that right? Yes. You don't want any more healings? No. So he first reaction was to pray for boldness to preach and for more miracles. And you wonder, what was he doing? Was he being uh, unloving? Here's what he was doing. The secret lies in a phrase in the early part of Acts 4. It says that we know that a miracle has happened. We know that we can't deny it. We know that a miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. And they said they found no way to punish them any further. Look at me, listen, because of the people. We've got to take the case for Christ directly to the people. Let's not worry about Gavin Newsom. I'm praying for Gavin Newsom. I want him to be born again. But I know that there are people on the streets that are ready to get saved right now. They're ready to be born. Somebody help me now, I'm gonna tell you. Do we need to reach Gavin Newsom? Yes. Do we need to reach the people who are at the top and the pinnacle? Yes. But in the meantime, we've got to get all of those that are ready now to be born again. Because it is the people from the bottom up that will force change in America. That's what's gonna happen.